Hi folks, and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. We are constantly talking these days about lifestyle vehicles, and I have two of the newest ones on the market right here next to me. On my right, that is the Ford Bronco Sport, and on my left, that's the new Challenger, the Mazda CX-50. And in this video, we're gonna show you all the details of these two models and decide which one is better. Let's look at the two models we have here today, and both of these are the off-road ready models for these two vehicles. So the Mazda here, and I am gonna say Mazda, although for all my Canadians, let me address the fact that yes, we call it a Mazda here in Canada. In the US, you call it a Mazda. I kind of flip-flop between them both, but I'm gonna try to stick with Mazda for this review. So the CX-50, this is a brand new model, but they also already added a new package one model year later. That is the Meridian Edition, and that's what you're looking at at here. Now the big upgrade on Meridian, a real set of Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. You're also getting that set of 18-inch wheels, the black plastic cladding, a graphic up here on the hood, and some unique style which makes this thing look good. And then on top of Meridian Edition, we also have the Apex package which brings along the roof bars, you get that massive roof rack up there, and some mud flaps. So this CX-50 is fully loaded with every single feature you're going to want to go off road and actually get some work done or maybe have some fun camping. Now over here on the Bronco Sport, this is the Badlands, which once again is the best off-road version you can buy. Now what makes it so? Well, first of all, you also get a set of Falcon Wild Peaks, but I got to point this out. These are Falcon Wild Peaks AT3s, whereas these are Falcon Wild Peak Trails, a little more aggressive on the Ford. Not a lot, but definitely a little more aggressive over here. Now those are fit to 17-inch wheels as well, so you get more sidewall. Now the other thing on the Bronco Sport, because you get the Badlands, you also get black plastic cladding everywhere, you get a unique suspension setup, and you get a unique twin clutch rear drive unit, which is actually gonna allow you to imitate a locker. So Ford, on sort of the hardcore off-road features, has a little bit of an edge. But of course, today we're really just gonna focus on driving around in the winter time on some wet, sloppy roads, and we'll be able to tell you which one of these actually handles better with its all-wheel drive system. We have to talk about the overall size here, but honestly more just about the overall shape. You can see the windshield here on the Mazda is very raked, whereas over there on the Bronco Sport, it's much more upright. And that's the entire kind of cab. Here on the Mazda, everything is raked and kind of stylish. The Ford over there is sort of straight up and boxy, and that allows it to maximize interior space because on paper, the Mazda is actually bigger. If you're talking about wheelbase, this is 110 inches right here, which is five inches longer than the Bronco Sport. And then overall length, this CX-50 is over 10 inches longer. You can kind of see it here. We line them up for you. So yes, the Bronco Sport is smaller, but I do think it uses its interior space a little bit better. But you know what? Why don't we put that to the test right now? I'll go climb in both of them and we'll see how I fit. So key feature in these vehicles is space. So let's have a look. Does Steve fit? So let me climb into the second row here on the Bronco. Now this is dad seating position in front of me. And on paper, this is 36.9 inches of leg room. And I don't really have enough knee room. I mean, I could kind of make it work, but it's definitely squishy in here. At this point, I have to mention I'm six foot over 300 pounds. So I'm a big guy, of course. Now, the point I was making outside the vehicle though is look, headroom. There's a ton of headroom here. And again, that's just because of the shape of the Bronco Sport. So the other thing I'll mention just quickly, this luxury package, you get these nice leather seats. Yeah, they're actually quite comfortable. So I could fit back here if the driver was to move forward and sort to make some more space for me so if it's a smaller driver i'd be okay but the back seat is sort of just so so right. now let's go climb in the cx50 yeah. so now let's climb into the cx50 and i can already tell you it's harder to get into because i got to get my head so much lower because this door is so low because of the rake now sadly 
Headroom is an issue here. I don't have enough of it. I'm right here. We do have the panoramic sunroof, so I could kind of sit up into the sunroof, but that's not comfortable. So for somebody who's taller, the rake in this roof is significant. Although you might have noticed, I actually have a little bit more leg room in this vehicle. It's funny how these things work. This is just under 40 inches of rear seat leg room. So you have more space right here, but less space up above you for head and shoulder room. So really, this back seat comes down to well, what size are you? Are you a tall person, big torso, short legs? It's gonna depend what size you are as to whether or not you're gonna fit well back here. But overall, the seat is fairly comfortable and uh, I do have a heated seat as well, which I appreciate in the back. Now let's look at what you can fit in the back. So first of all, here on our CX-50, we do have a powered hatch. And once again, on paper, this is actually about two cubic feet more than the Bronco Sport. And that's just thanks to how long this floor is. And this is a significantly sized cargo space. You could fit quite a bit in here. I will show you, there's a bit of underfloor storage and underneath these extra floor mats, there is a spare tire. It's not a full size, it's just a temporary use, but still nice to have a spare tire down there. And now we can take a look at the Bronco over here. And first of all, it has a party trick that Mazda doesn't. The glass opens by itself. A lot of people really love that feature. I always hear from dog owners that this is an important feature. So now let's open the whole hatch. That is not powered. That's just old school. And yeah, I mean, just by eyeballing it, you can tell this is a little bit shorter than the Mazda's cargo area is. Underneath this big rubber floor mat though, let's take a look at what we got. Is that a full sizer? So that's actually a full size spare tire. Unlike over there, that was the temporary use. So that's definitely something to note. And then the other thing, and I already got a shot of it, there's this really cool kind of storage deck lid, which slides to two different positions. So you can use it totally tucked away. You can put stuff on top of it, or you can move it back. You can see it here and use it as a little tailgate kind of table. So Ford is definitely more along the lines of, hey, you're going on an adventure let us do something to help you with that. And the other thing that shows that, there's also a plug back here, 400 watts and a 12 volt, so you have power at the back of the Bronco. Okay folks, time to start driving these things. Now the first thing I like to do is come out here onto a snow covered road and see how the all wheel drive acts when you just put your foot to the floor. So I'm here in the CX-50 and this thing only has three drive modes. The Ford has a lot more. So right now I'm just in normal mode. I'm gonna floor it and we'll see what happens and then we'll try again in off-road mode. Here we go. All right, well, pretty uneventful. And the key thing there was traction control. The power started to come on. Traction control very quickly cut the power, which allows the, wheel to, the wheels to gain traction again. And then I took off. Um, yeah, uneventful. That's exactly what you want when you are doing something like that. When you're taking off in the snow, this kind of simulates, let's say it's an emergency response to something. Suddenly you need to really hit it and uh, you don't want your vehicle to get all squirrely and you don't want to have to be compensating for what the powertrain is doing and I didn't have to at all. So we'll do one more takeoff in off-road mode just to see how it acts differently than in normal. Here we go. Oh, interesting. So I'm never sure what exactly it's gonna do, but in this case, off-road mode actually allowed the wheels to spin. I didn't have traction control right away jump in to say, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. And that is an interesting difference. I was curious about this because I wanted to know, hey, should I recommend that you drive in off-road mode, even just on a snowy day? And now I know the answer is no. Normal mode did a better job of keeping the vehicle calm and in control than off-road mode did. And that is because if you're truly off-road, stuck in a huge snowbank or in the mud, sometimes you want the wheels to be spinning as fast as they can. And that's what it allowed it to do. So I like that it's a real off-road mode, but for snowy driving, you wanna just leave it in normal because the all-wheel drive system does a nice job. Now let's jump in the Bronco Sport and see the difference. All right, time to repeat the same test here in the Bronco Sport. Although the Bronco Sport has a lot more drive modes. Here we have normal, eco, sport, 
slippery, mud and ruts, sand, and rock crawl. So you got a lot of choices. We're gonna do it in two modes, like the CX-50. We're gonna start in normal, and then we'll try it in slippery. Okay, so here we go. Normal mode, in drive, gonna go foot to the floor. Let's see what the all-wheel drive does. Well, basically the same response as the Mazda. Traction control instantly kicked in, cut the power, and then slowly rolled it back on. The only slight difference that I felt is that the Ford Bronco Sport felt like it was a little more rear wheel drive bias. I actually felt the back end start to step out really quickly before traction control caught, whereas the Mazda definitely felt like more of the power was going to the front wheels. And in this case, yeah, you actually kind of want it to be front wheel drive bias but overall that was also a pretty calm and controlled takeoff okay now we're in slippery mode gonna floor it let's see what happens that's funny honestly I didn't feel a massive difference between slippery and normal. I think in slippery, the power is maybe distributed a little bit better, so I didn't feel like it wanted to step out in the rear end, but identical engine response. The traction control kicked in and then slowly rolls on the power. Um, overall, if I had to pick one of the two systems, man, it is hard. They're very similar. They both did exactly what I wanted them to do. And now here we are driving in this CX-50. So the first thing I just want to talk about quickly is why this CX-50 even exists. And it's because Mazda has latched on to this outdoor off-road kind of trend. More people than ever, they own kayaks and bikes and they like to go hiking and camping. And there's actually data to back that up that especially since the pandemic, those things have gotten more popular. So a brand like Mazda, they had to pivot and say, you know what, let's build a vehicle to suit those needs. And that's why the CX-50 exists. I mean, is it that different from a CX-5? No, it is not. What it does do though, it has more wheelbase, which means it can tow more, 3,500 pounds, and it has a little bit more ground clearance so it's going to be better off-road so you know what dad i think it was smart of mazda to go this way to make sure they were cashing in on this trend and then what i truly appreciate is this meridian edition that came out with a year later it adds those all-terrain tires we both know the most significant upgrade you can make to an off-road vehicle or a vehicle that's doing anything called off-roading is tires so why not do it right from the factory i appreciate that we get those here and now, you know, all that is to say now, let's talk about how it actually drives and you're behind the wheel. So you got any thoughts about how the, the CX-50 is handling out here? Mazdas in general are always very uh, mechanically, they're tight. And, you know, the responsiveness of this engine, the competency behind the wheel, I mean, everything about it is nice. So in other words, it reminds me of every Mazda vehicle that I've ever driven. You can always tell that someone cares about driving. When you drive a Mazda, the person who engineered it, they want it to feel fun. And I don't care what it is, like you said, a big crossover, CX-9 right down to an MX-5, they're all kind of fun. Yeah, so to me, this whole, you know, off-roading package is, is more of an afterthought. For Mazda, it's it's that thing that says everybody else has got one, we gotta have one too. That's not to say that it doesn't work. However, it's it's no doubt uh, flavor of the month. And yeah. as such, you're still getting a Mazda product, um, and you get a few little things here. I really it kind of annoys me to call it an off roader. I got, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I'll call it a rough roader. I sure. certainly wouldn't call it an off-roader because what, what doesn't change is your approach and departure angles um, and that's what's going to kill you. But actually, I think you hit the nail on the head. We need to say it again, which is it tows more and, you know, we also do a lot of work in the RV industry and that is something that is booming. And yeah. the whole, you know, pandemic brought in a whole new younger demographic into RVing and they're sticking around. So they're buying these little uh, trailers and you know what, this is a, an excellent vehicle 
for towing a lot of those. Yeah, and that's where, you know, a 2,000 pound or a 2,200 pound tow rating, like we have in the Bronco Sport, well, that could actually make a difference going 22 to 3,500. There's actually a big separator there in terms of what type of trailer you'll get. And then, you know what, Dad, the last point I want to make is, is sort of what you were getting at as well, which is that Mazda is sort of new to this sort of off-road adventure game, and they're coming at it from kind of a luxury standpoint. It's already been a number of years where Mazda came out publicly and said, look, we're gonna to pivot to become more of a premium brand. And everything in here suggests that. The leather, the stitching, everything in here feels more luxurious than it does over there in the Bronco Sport. So Mazda's coming at this from the area of we build a luxury product, let's make it a little more rough and tumble. Ford, on the other hand, well, they're not calling that thing a luxury vehicle and they're not even pretending it is, but they come at it from a more practical and in my opinion, fun standpoint. So why don't we go jump in the Bronco Sport now and we'll uh, talk about how that thing is. Yeah, fair enough. And now here we are in the Ford Bronco Sport. And I gotta tell you, Dad, the thing I notice immediately is we have more room. We're not touching, we got more shoulder room. Yeah. And again, this all comes down to the way these vehicles are shaped. Because on paper, the CX-50 is bigger. If you were just to look at the wheelbase and the length, you'd say, oh, that thing's bigger. But in practice, the way this Bronco Sport is put together, it feels roomier inside straight up. And this is from two big dudes, so we know what we're talking about. It doesn't feel like it's bigger it is actually bigger i mean it's the shape of this cabin mazda works on what i call the the jelly bean uh <laughs> design it's true. you know everything is is rounded and contoured and and it's very attractive and what they you know like to call themselves a a driver's vehicle whereas this is typically utility based ford design mm -hmm. this vehicle is all about getting the job done, whatever that job is. I mean, never mind the amount of space, but it's also our seating height. You feel how much taller you're sitting? You definitely do. I mean, the glass is dragged lower. You got a flatter hood. So even if we don't have any much more uh, clearance on this vehicle, you feel like you have more clearance. You definitely do. And you actually do on paper. This thing does have more ground clearance, better approach, better departure. So on all of those kind of serious off-road things, the Bronco Sport is a hair better. Now, one of the interesting things I think is that these are both turbocharged inline four cylinder engines, but the Ford Bronco Sport makes more horsepower, but the Mazda makes more torque. <laughs> so, you know what? Let's put my foot into it. That's pretty good. It gets up and goes, this Bronco Sport. I wouldn't complain about that power. However, I do think the Mazda hits a little bit harder off the line. Overall, not a huge difference. Yeah, and honestly, that's one of the things when you, if you're cross shopping these two, um, you're gonna end up buying that Mazda because you like the way it looks. Um, if you buy the Ford, you're gonna buy this because you're in it and you recognize all the things that it'll do for you. Yeah. That's my takeaway. So, yeah, Dad, I think that's what it comes down to. You said it. The styling, which one you think ultimately looks better, and then, you know, if you want to save a couple of bucks, you go for the Mazda, but if you want the vehicle that has better utility, more usability, you go for the Bronco Sport. And I also get the feeling here, I said this earlier, this just feels a little more fun. It has more of a fun-loving attitude. The Mazda feels more serious. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And the fun part, the best part about owning a Bronco Sport is that you really, you stop saying sport the day that you get it. <laughs> and when people say, what do you have? You go, I got a Bronco. <laughs> and you just, you just, you just kind of leave that laying out there. Yeah, you get to blend it. <laughs> Actually, what cracks me up is when you turn on the adaptive cruise control, the little icon comes up to show you there's a vehicle in front of you and it's a full-size two-door Bronco. Yeah. So even down here in the info screen, they're trying to trick you. But yes, I think Ford was brilliant with that marketing, calling this a Bronco because you get to be part of the club. Exactly. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this video. Now, I do have to say, if you do have an active lifestyle, like I was mentioning, if you like to kayak, canoe, bike, or camp, both of these are good options. Here with the CX-50, you're getting a little crossover that handles nicely and it looks sharp. But right now, I have to tell you, if I was laying down my money, it would be on this Ford Bronco Sport. For me, I really appreciate the more utilitarian nature of this Bronco and the fact that everything here is meant to be utilized actually out there in the world. Plus, honestly, I just fit better in here. 
But now, of course, I need to hear from you. So please go below into the comments. Let me know which one of these two crossovers you would buy. And then, as always, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see which vehicles we're testing next. See ya. Oh, <laughs>